Here they are, the Mycenaean. Arguably, they are one of the best military cultures across the game when you account for differences in power level between eras. Their unique district is so powerful. Their unique unit is unlocked so early. And their overall trait is actually very useful in training quick, strong units. Let's jump straight into the Mycenaeans. So when we think about the early game humankind, we think about the Egyptians and the Harappans. And in particular, the Egyptians are undoubtedly the best culture because industry is everything. Have a look at the Mycenaeans district. This is called a Cyclopean Fortress, and it works the same way as a garrison. You can see it provides some fortification and also a lot of stability. Not like a normal district where you lose 10, you can see here on this farmer's quarter, you actually gain 15. So the net difference between this and a normal district is actually 25 stability, minus 10 up to positive 15. But take a look, when I click on it, I can place it wherever I want. It behaves like a garrison, but it's very different because it innately provides plus three industry. It also interacts with the tiles around it. Take a look at this Cyclopean Fortress. Plus 15 stability and plus 19 industry. That is arguably better, or at least on par, with an Egyptian pyramid that hasn't quite taken advantage of all of its adjacencies, or maybe it can only have three districts around it, whatever. This is hugely powerful, and I absolutely recommend in your first city you smash one out. Have a look. This territory, which was a highly industrial territory, is earning 18 industry at the moment. That will double when my Cyclopean Fortress comes online. And this is just one city and one fortress. The beauty of being able to place it wherever you want is that you can place it in areas like this that are highly industrial, right? The forests, the mountains, naturally they produce a lot of industry. Whereas normally you're stuck generally building directly next to your city. Also, Joe players are looking at the start and thinking, wow, this would be a great Joe start too. Another thing I would really recommend to you when you're playing as these wonderful Mycenaeans is this. In your technology screen, I reckon you take city defense as one of your first ones. I don't blame you if you want to get domestication or calendar for a resource first, but it's so good because this is where your unique unit is. Actually, take a look. This is worth acknowledging. One of the very first technologies, in fact it is literally first if you want it to be, provides you with this, your unique unit. It's like the warrior, but it's stronger, and it has this crucial champion ability which makes it stronger when attacking in the first round of battle. A great interesting addition that makes this really like the normal warrior but on steroids. And here is some good fortune. We have spawned near-ish to the Nubians. Who's playing the Nubians? It'll be one of you who tweeted me your personas on Twitter. Thank you for doing that. It's Beowulf. All right, Beowulf. Let's see what you've got, you military, literally a militarist as well. A militarist Russia who attacks others on site. Well, if this isn't a great test for the Mycenaeans, I don't know what is. And there's our first victory. So basically the way to play the Mycenaeans is to focus in on this military sort of style to the early game. If you're not a normally a militarist, bear with me. I think actually you don't need to play a militarist run to have a successful start as the Mycenaeans. Their district, as we've discussed, is powerful enough, but crucially here, I want to also highlight this, era stars. So as a militarist culture, of course, we earn era stars from military victories. And it's really important in humankind that you try and go for gold, particularly in your main era, because here as a militarist culture, you can see we're getting 150 versus 100. It's basically 1.5x multiplier. So as a militarist in the early game, where military endeavors are relatively straightforward, it's really worth hunting down the enemy. And this is a fantastic position to try it in. So let's try and get some kills here as we build up our start and try and go for the quick win as the Mycenaeans. A lot of you have asked me for some combat tips as well, by the way. So in this video, I'm also going to provide some of those. In general, and here's a fairly basic one, fight from high ground. And if you're not on high ground and you don't like your chances of dealing more than you're taking, it's generally worth defending. I'm going to move now into this forest and push the aggression on this flag. I'm actually going to give up my high ground because it's a 2v1. I feel like I can take them out here. 
And in the next turn, yep, as predicted, a nice, quick, easy victory there. Our units have been left a little bit battered and bruised, but that's okay. Even though industry is key, don't forget to build a little bit of a balance of food on your cities because you're gonna need some production to build your units. So I've just attached this second territory to my capital and this territory borders their capital city. This is another really beautiful thing about the Cyclopean Fortress is that you can place it wherever. This would be a great spot for it, provide me a lot of industry, but honestly, having it on their border could almost be better. In this case, I actually don't think I necessarily need it all the way over here though. So I'm gonna place it here for that nice industry bonus. Just going to prevent them from expanding by triggering another battle here. Even though I'm a bit weak, I think it's worth doing. In this case, they are the aggressor. It's my task to defend the flag. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna move this weak unit behind this other one using the limited terrain to my advantage and then just defend on the flag. You can see defending, I'm taking a lot less damage than they did. And so that enabled me to win this fight pretty easily. And as the victor, I will move in here and try and prevent them from settling this. Again, they're gonna try and fight me, but again, they were the aggressor. So I can use that defend and hold strategy to my advantage when there really isn't a lot of other terrain to make the most of here. I'm gonna try and surround this unit instead. Actually, change my tactic a bit mid fight. It's not paid off. Try and defend, go for the draw. <laughs> it was a draw, but it's all military stars, baby. And that is okay, particularly as I have a new army forming ready to strike. The other beautiful thing about the Cyclopean Fortress and another reason why the Mycenaeans are just better than the Hittites, sorry Hittite fans, uh, is that of course it counts as a garrison. So you can set it as a spawn point. So now my capital all the way up here can produce these wonderful unique warriors in one to two turns each, and they will spawn right down here on the Cyclopean Fortress and I can just nip around and hopefully take Kerma fairly quickly. The other thing to remember is that not only are these base technologies kind of key, but you're also probably gonna work towards organized warfare that will allow you to reinforce with additional armies. Uh, other key technologies that you might want to consider include masonry, which will allow you to expend population to quickly build units. But really, I don't think that's entirely useful for reasons I'll discuss in a bit. But other things that you might find useful are wheel for the mighty chariot, a great unit, and also bronze working if you're coming up against the Huns or you want to connect copper, a very useful resource into your productive empire. Army composition, a great civic for you to pick up in the early game. And I would recommend that you maybe you delay some of your other choices so that this one is a little bit cheaper. The 30% unit industry cost combos well with the Mycenaeans innate 20% discount to units. It's also worth noting that their extra experience that units gain when you train them basically means they're the same as the Hittites but better. But that's a conversation for the tier list video. Anyway, I'm going to pick up the extra combat strength because I really want to be able to romp home here and destroy my opponent. And honestly, I think I'm ready to do that. So let's test out the Mycenaeans and see how well they go in practice. I'm sorry, Beowulf, but you're going to have to be my test dummy. We're both militarists, really, or we've both got high war support. Let's see how we fear. So I've got a, a really a strong regiment of my four unique warriors here. They are promoted quite a bit uh, innately. And thanks to the Mycenaeans trait, let us, oh, they just do not want a bar of it. Fantastic. Let's pursue that aggression and maybe also send these units up this way. The other thing that's important to note here, not only as a militarist culture are we earning our crucial stars through military victories, but also as a militarist culture we could use this. And I'm going to use it here for the purpose of this video to show you just how strong it can be. If your city has at least four populations, which my one does, you can go over here to the left and use the Iron Reserves ability. This is the thing that is naturally triggered in humankind when someone goes to war with your city and the peasants come out to defend it, you know, your peasant units, they're not great. You can see they only have 13 combat strength, but sometimes strength comes in numbers. So I'm going to use it. You can see it's added to my agrarian star, which is really weird because it was the same four pops just shifted from a city into units. Either way, it's free stars, another benefit of playing as the Mycenaeans. And of course they spawn on my city spawn. 
uh, garrison. So they actually appear down here, ready to fight immediately. However, I've got another task for them. I want them to go and take this city here, while I take this city down here with my uniques. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I said that I would give you some combat tips throughout this video as well, and one really big one is if you're planning on sieging a city and there are units outside the city that won't trigger the siege itself, not like these ones, then it can be beneficial to fight them off first. So I'm going to do that. Honestly, we are almost so overpowered thanks to our early unlock of this unit, thanks to our free experience that our units get, that really I can probably play this on auto resolve. In general, it would be best to wait outside the walls, to hold high ground, but in this case we can actually just overwhelm them with our sheer power of being a militarist, of having our unique unit, and having the numbers to do it. Take a look at that victory. We didn't even take a single loss on auto-resolve. What the heck? Here we have Rad Ragtag Army number two. These guys don't actually have any of my uniques, but just through sheer numbers and through using the militarist ability early. And this is really when it's at its strongest, right? The militarist ability is at its strongest in humankind when you are rallying these units early because they're bad units, but you win by numbers. You are playing the numbers game with these guys. I'm going to end round to defend and just see what kind of damage that they can do against my crappy units. So you can see that they're doing more than I'm dealing. And that's a, that's a concern, right? That is a real concern. So what we're going to have to do is try and overwhelm them with numbers, as I say. Try and get the high ground as well where we can. This makes sense. See, it's a slightly more favorable attack. You can see it's fairly even. Whereas when I attacked from the lower ground, not as good. Uh, when your units get a little bit weaker though, it can be worth just defending. It's about basically a trade-off here. Every unit that you destroy is one less attack that you'll take next time. So, in that light, I'm going to try and bring these units around together and attack three in one place. So I'm going to move up here onto this high ground, brilliant, and then go for, a, go for multiple units attacking one. That way we're limiting the number of attacks that the enemy can deal per turn. I think this city is weak enough now that we head in for the siege itself. We're not mucking around. We're going to manual resolve, deploy. Uh, this is a fairly interesting fight actually because there isn't a lot of interesting geography in the way. This is a flat, open fight. I'll keep a unit back here on my flag just in case, but really it's not needed actually. So I'm going to surge through, completely surround this unit. I'm going to send my strongest units in first because... One, I want to protect my weaker ones, but secondly, the stronger the unit, the less damage, the less sort of extra damage that will be inflicted on it by carrying out an attack. Here's Army Wages, another brilliant early one. I don't really need the stability, and I'm not actually ransacking anything at the moment, but I'm going to take this one regardless. Back to this siege where we're not favoured to win, and you can see I'm just repositioning my troops here into a position that I think is going to be most beneficial for them. We're now dealing nearly equal attacks. Again, I'm going to try and 3v1. I don't have power, but I do have the numbers. So let's see if we can do it. Brilliant. This unit has stepped in place of the other one, which has opened up their flag. You can see here it's round three of three. This is the round where flags matter, so I'm going to move my unit onto their flag and defend, giving me the best chance of survival. I'm going to stab here because they're unlikely to attack this one because they're probably going to try and defend the flag. And if I can make this unit as weak as possible, I can make it less likely to deal any meaningful damage to my unit on their flag. End the round, and as you can see, Victory was ours! Even though we didn't destroy all the peasants, we outpaced them, we outplayed them, and we used our militarist ability to effectively hoover up the city for free. Over here in the same turn! How devastating! Our proper professional trained army has no issues fighting at Kerma. And now let's head in for the final siege against their capital. Again, I'm just using the pure strength of my unique Mycenaean unit. And just to reiterate, it's not the fact that it's just cheap and it replaces the warrior. It's not the fact that, as the Mycenaeans, you start with 25 extra experience, which basically gives you one extra combat strength. It's not even the fact that you can utilize the early game mechanics 
It's the fact that the Mycenaeans' unique district enables you to do this. It's powerful, it provides industry, it acts as a spawn point, you can place it where you want, and it keeps your city stable. So you don't need to worry about flailing stability and the negative impacts that come from that, right? Half influence, for example, if your city isn't completely stable. You can instead focus on what counts, building up quick military units, taking quick victories against your opponents, and ultimately, hopefully, also capturing some cities in the process that makes investing in military units even more worthwhile because you're not giving up any infrastructure at all. You end up being the complete victor of every fight. Look at this. Have you ever seen a greater loss of war support in humankind history other than a nuke, which actually weirdly does the opposite? I doubt it. And just like that, the Mycenaeans have demonstrated their pure power. I've got so much war score I could actually vassalize them, which is something that you can rarely do in humankind. But I'm instead going to force their surrender just to show you here toward the end of this video how powerful the Mycenaeans are. And now that I've done my dash with the Mycenaeans, I'm ready to change culture. You can see I've got the gold militarist star, so a huge amount of fame. Look as I've rocketed ahead of everyone in the ancient era, completed my stars, and now I could take this game wherever I want. And I want to really stress that, because I know that a lot of you perhaps aren't so keen to go to war in humankind, and I would argue that for the Mycenaeans it's good on two fronts. Firstly, early game warfare is easy. It's much more straightforward, you have less things to worry about, you don't need to worry about boats and airplanes and nukes and all sorts. You can really just focus in on what matters. Basic units, which you have better of, and numbers, which you can rally thanks to your militarist ability. Combo that with this very powerful, although in-game actually displaying not quite as industrialist as we might have thought in the beginning, an interesting and fortified district nonetheless, you can probably see why I rate the Mycenaeans right up there. Not quite as good as their Egyptian or maybe even Harappan counterparts, but definitely one of humankind's best militarist cultures. And someone else wants a piece of me here too! And arguably one of the best cultures in the game. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.